yeah, we'll have you. According to this absolutely belter book, what I found on eBay, you are not allowed to do a review of a new Alfa Romeo without mentioning the F word. Flimsy. Well, yeah, but not that one. Fetching. Nope. Definitely not. There's little kids watching you now. Ferrari. Yes. So that's what we're gonna do. Fortunately, look at this. How Ferrari-ish is that, right? Now, we need to work out what we're going to do next, so... Overdramatic static shots of car with emotional voiceover, ideally mentioning Italy and or passion and or Ferrari. All right then. <clears throat> okay, okay, I can do this. Right, this is the Alfa Romeo Giulia Quad... Quad... The Giulia QV, a 510 horsepower Italian super saloon from Italy that looks extremely emotional and exotic and red and, um, and passionate. But a car that probably doesn't have anything to do with Ferrari. Wrong! It actually does. It has a lot to do with Ferrari as it goes. What are the chances? For a start, Fiat says that this fetching looking thing, which is nestled under a slice of actual carbon fibre, is Ferrari inspired. Now that's a politician's way of saying it's basically the engine from a Ferrari 488 but with a couple of cylinders chopped off. And it's channeled to the rear wheels through one of the world's great eight-speed gearboxes. The result is a 3.9 second 0 to 62 time and a 191 miles per hour top speed. All the while sounding like this. Yeah, sorry about that. This car just does that to you. Anyway, the other link to Ferrari is the fact that this car was engineered by a team led by the man who also did this car. The result is that if you're so inclined, you can do stuff like this. But actually, like much more importantly than that, it just feels magic all the time. Now, this steering is a variable steering rack. Now, normally these things suck. They just feel weird and artificial. But this one, it works. It's the best one I've ever used. It's really light around town, but then if you're going at any sort of pace, it really sharpens up. I even detail like the actual steering wheel itself, which just feels lovely to hold and looks great. So it's all leather and Alcantara and carbon fiber, and it's got a big red starter button on it. A bit like, well, you know, a Ferrari. It's optional, like. And you don't need me to explain what it looks like, but I should point out just how well detailed this thing is. I mean, look at this carbon fiber spoiler and these wheels, and inside it's the same. There's more carbon in here than the toaster in a student flat. It just looks like proper thought and expense has gone into making this fast and exciting. Now, usually I do this sort of setup to demonstrate that there's no room in the back of a car. It's a nice way of doing it, but here, no such problem, there's loads of space. The real reason I'm doing it this way is because of these seats. Now, they're a three grand option, but if you buy this car, you have to buy these. I'm gonna show you something. I tape this here. The view from here is amazing. All this carbon fiber and exposed screws and stuff. It's like club class in a rally car. Same here, really. Like, if you're into these sort of things, it gives you a little tingle when you realize that you can see a line of the carbon underbonnet as you're driving along. And that sort of stuff's in addition to the basic stuff being right. You know, the sort of stuff that Alfa Romeo usually gets very wrong. Like in an Alfa, normally the driving position isn't in any way suited for a homo sapien type person. And it'll normally have panel gaps that you can steer another Alfa through. It even rides pretty nicely for a 510 horsepower car. And the gearbox is really lovely and smooth shifting. And it's got these flipping mint, huge racing style paddle shifters that are made out of metal. And here's a nice little touch, so in the spirit of all good super saloons, it's got selectable driving modes, it's called DNA in this case, it goes all the way up to race mode. Now you can switch it up to that and it'll make the gear changes more aggressive and the car louder and the dampened firmer and all that. But if you want the noise, you want the aggressive gear changes, but you don't want to be juddered to kingdom come, you can press this little damper button and it'll soften the suspension again. It's quite nice. The problem is, 
This is a 510 horsepower saloon that costs 61,000 pounds. And actually, this one costs 74,000 pounds because it's got carbon ceramic brakes and carbon bucket seats and 80 quid's worth of ashtray. So, you're gonna wanna buy this one, but you're actually gonna have to buy this one. This one being the normal version that costs half the price and is today's alpha shaped alternative to the Audi A4 or BMW 3 Series or Mercedes C-Class or Jaguar XE you're thinking about buying. But the question is, does it retain any of that Ferrari-like magic of the QV? It tries to and that's the problem. The QV has a Ferrari inspired engine whereas this has the diesel out of a Jeep Cherokee so it's not off to the best start. But you know what? It's not bad. It revs more freely than most four-cylinder diesels. It's quick enough and while it's quite noisy on startup, it quietens down once on the move. There's a lowered power version of this diesel too, which has similar characteristics, but a better economy. So that's not the problem. The problem is, it sometimes feels like Alpha has taken the QV and simply stuck a diesel in. What's the problem with that leg? The problem is, Mark, this one feels like it's got ADHD. Steering this sharp is fine in a performance car, but in a diesel like this, you want it to be calm at least some of the time, a bit like a BMW 320D. It just feels twitchy and all a bit frantic in here. It's not as relaxed as you want it to be, especially in dynamic mode, and it could be comfier too. That's just my preference though, and if you're after a sporty alternative to the usual German stuff, this is much better than a Jaguar XE. Some of the plastics feel a bit flimsy, but it's generally solid in here. The design is really nice, and we like how this screen's integrated into the dash. That said, the infotainment system isn't the best, it's not especially intuitive, and the graphics ain't the best either. But importantly, and surprisingly, Alpha hasn't forgotten to do the sensible stuff. The stuff that appeals to sane-minded consumers. And it's done it very well. For example, this car has lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, and the highest adult occupant protection rating of any car Euro Cup has ever tested. And the spec sheet is ample as heck, including dual zone climate control, auto wheels, piddly ones, pedestrian detection and automatic gearbox, LED rear lights, colour infotainment, Bluetooth and EOB all as standard. But there are still frustrating things about the Julia, like this boot is the same size as this one, but this opening is tiny, whereas this opening, massive. And that's not just a Julia thing, that's more of a saloon versus hatch thing, and it happens for any car. But the thing about the Julia is, it will only be available as a saloon. There'll be no estate, no other version apart from this. What about the SUV? Yeah, apart from that. <laughs> Alright Dave, that was mint. So, um, according to this boot, there's just one more F word that we need to say. Go on. Uh, finally, when reviewing an Alfa Romeo, always ensure to mention parent company Fiat, ideally in a derisory tone and alluding to non-German, non-premium origins, ergo making this an inferior and or unreliable product. So if we can just do that when you're going through the rest of the bad stuff. Bad stuff? What is the normal bad stuff? No, I'm done. Huh. Right. Well, Dave, 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 has it broken down at least? Mm. You lied! I honestly thought that we'd end up concluding that the Julia was just above average and that this QV version was a little bit better, mostly by virtue of it being absolutely mental. What's actually happened is the standard Julia is far more excellent than we could have expected and this QV version is bona fide brilliant. Yep, it's priced well. Well, that one is. It looks great, obviously it's an Alpha, but not obviously for an Alpha, it's actually a very sensible alternative to the usual German stuff that you're probably thinking about buying. Maybe Alpha's actually rewritten the book this time.